The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on the 15th day of March. As I said before, Ides of March, hopefully not the Hides of March. We're looking at uh, the Dow, and this is going to be important being Tuesday, day before the Fed speak. What, what can they say? I mean, really, the amount of information that's come in regarding earnings, etc., is the, the latest, I think, is not as good as it had been, but it's still pretty good. I mean, the jobless rate, et cetera. So the Fed, on the one hand, really needs in an automatic way. They should have been done it, doing it. I, I mean, I'm talking about this since, I think, 2012. Why isn't the Fed just normalizing everything and just raising rates according to the amount of uh, demand? If people are asking for loans and they are start to ask more and more, then you start to raise a little bit. That's just kind of a normality. And that way you're getting ahead of things like inflation. Of course, we had deflation for a long time. But um, that that would have been normal. Now it's like a, it's a big thing, but it shouldn't be a big thing. It should just be a kind of a normal, normal economic activity. So I don't know what the Fed can do. I, I suspect they're going to wave a big stick, but only do a quarter point because of the uncertainty in the markets. But the, and the fact that look, let me run this quickly. Dow's up 160 at 33,103. S&P is up 20, uh, 30 at 4203. The QQQ index 100. Is trading up 380 at 322. Ooh, lousy action. IWM holding okay, but still uh, uh, now it's sideways. Up 90 cents at 193.62. Uh, do gold? Gold is yeah, and this is what I wanted to get to. So we're talking about inflation. Well, certainly if you're looking at the last two three weeks, you've had an incredible move in gold from the from under 1900 to the 20. I, I always. I dread putting these in because they get smoothed out and the number doesn't mean anything anymore because it's a continuous contract. 2,078.8. I will put it in because I keep coming back to it enough. 2,078.80. And that was, I think it was March the, uh, what was that, March the 5th? March the 8th. So let me also put that in. So that's March the 8th. Well, March the 8th, it screams to um, not an all-time high, not a, even a, basically a recovery high from the high that was made back in, I think it was about March of 2020, uh, touched the 2100 area. So this is a double top pattern. I, I'll talk about that in a moment. But what I wanted to say, talking about the Fed, because what, what I want to do is just quickly go through the uh, indices. Now we can go to the, through the commodities. Look, gold is down. Forty-two dollars at nineteen eighteen. Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five in six days since the highs. Five days, including the highs, six days. But going six days back, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. The low was nineteen hundred and three. So we've almost done, and this is what I call the Eiffel Tower. It looks like an uppercase A. I always type this in. Let me just do that now. Uh, a, make it big, make it red, red, make it font. Let's go all the way to 48. That's the biggest they have here. And here it is. So we've got the Eiffel Tower. We had that before. Way back there, back in January, when it ran up to 1850 and then plunged to the downside, and then it started moving higher. And look at this. There's the A pattern, or I call it the Eiffel Tower, straight up and straight down. Um, I'm going to keep it there. I'm, I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to make it a little faint, fainter because otherwise it just gets in the way of all the thinking. So 70. Okay, there it is. There's your A. So silver, same thing. Silver is trading. Uh, down 36 cents at 
uh, having gone from the 20, 27 and point forties uh, down to today's 24.93, another big move up and a big move down, the same number of bars. We're looking at um, high-grade copper. High-grade copper has, has made the Eiffel Tower. Uh, it's gone straight up and straight down at a peak in the Chapman wave. You're looking at um, crude oil. Look at that. We're down... 8.62 today at 95.40. We were at 130.50. So is this an aberration? Are we going to go back and do retesting, etc.? Well, if you just go from the patterns that are forming and try to do it as, as I always like to say, let the, let the price movement tell us what could be going on in the fundamentals. Is this really telling us that there's going to be some form of amelioration in the oil sector, that there'll be alternatives, or maybe we're starting a big slowdown. We don't need this kind of oil because, yeah, we're not back to um, January levels in the 70s, but we've gone back very quickly. All these um, aberrational gains, this is the nuance that was really uh, based on fear. And it goes to 130.50 in the continuous contract on the 7th of March. And here it is at 94. That's 40 points. Well, do you realize at 40 points, we were trading at 63, 59.87 was the low in December. If you think that the price movement now is 40 points below the high, just the difference that 40 points is about what is that 60 percent 78 70 more yeah about 60 70 percent of the 59 price that it was at i mean now you're trading not in the price of the, the the equity or whatever it is that you're looking at but the movements that you're starting to see are extraordinary now either we're looking at now we have to go back to talk about ukraine we have no choice now either we're, we're looking at a situation that says that crude oil is going to be resolved to the downside over the coming weeks because whatever happens in the Ukraine and you have to be embarrassed when the president of the United States calls uh, the Arab Emirates when, it, when you get a, get a call and um, there's a, basically an answering machine that says, um, after lunch, um, call me again in another couple of weeks. I mean, th that's really embarrassing. Uh, it says, it, it speaks to some, definitely speaks to a degree of, on the one hand, arrogance, and the other, on the other hand, uh, incompetence. And all I can say is, there's something wrong with that picture. And, and therefore, we've got to look at this and say, is there going to be some, I'm not saying whether it's good, bad, ugly, or anything, some resolution in the Ukrainian uh, population and in, in the whole aspect of the geopolitical side? Because we have to look at it and say, wait a minute, going from 130 down to 94, that means that within four or five days, if there is a sudden spiral into the 115 area, everything is back on. But if there is a sl slide into the 87 area, it says, wow, that is so unusual in these times to see crude oil, which is really key to a lot of what we're looking at, start to go back. So all I can say is, let's watch that price really closely, and the Fed is also. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're back, and I wanted to just kind of follow up because I'm talking about the Fed and what the Fed could, should, or would do under all these different circumstances. So on the one hand, they're looking at this and saying, you know, if if the macroeconomic and, and geopolitical scenario continues like this, we can't exacerbate um, the the uh, potential for some kind of a recession. We can't be the ones kind of instigating it by raising rates right now, when in fact, under any other circumstance, you'd say with with the prices of commodities so high, Yes, on the one hand, we have to fight inflation with high interest rates. But on the other hand, the whole economic scenario at this particular point, look at the FXI. This is the China large cap iShares. And it goes from just the most recent high was 39. And it's at 26. But it goes all the way back to 54.33 high of February. So it's been cut in half, exactly cut in half. Um, if China's... I mean, this basically looks like China is in a recession, right? Just the chart itself. Then surely we're going to be ha having some. There has to be a, a residual. There have to, has to be a ripple. The waves they have to kind of filter across the ocean, and we should be feeling that at some point. So I think it's a very tough. So my, my, I'm just guessing. But from the TLT action, look at this. The TLT is up today, but it went all the way. Just the most recent moved down from 142 to the 131s. The, the, these are bonds. These, this is, these are not stocks. These are not tech stocks. This, this is iShares 20-year Treasury bond fund ETF. I made a peak B minus because it took out the left side low, 134, most recent 134.98 low. We took out the, the monthly arch formation dreaded H pattern we spoke about yesterday at 133.19 back in March of 2021. What yesterday's low was 131. Let me just type it in here. It was 131.72. 131.72. You know, as I'm saying, this is this is extraordinary. Now I'm going to do this because I think it's important. I show this to my subscribers to my opening call every weekend. And let me do this one right here. New, where is it? New, new, there it is. So what I'm looking at here is the 30-year T 
bond yield is a TYX, it's white. The brown is a TNX, the 10 year T note yield. The cyan is the five year T note yield. And look what happened. The, there we go. The high that was made, I typed it in. So let me see if I can make this a different color. Let's make it uh, gray so I can read it. 24.12 was 2.412 was the high of uh, 19, the week of 19th of March of 2021. Is that correct? I need to just double check. It's a little hard to see. Okay. 24.04. Oh, I keep getting different numbers. 20. There it is. Okay. One. 2505, uh, 2585, I should make it white so I can read it. 2505, so it's not 2412, it's 2505, 25.05. And I wonder if this, I don't think this gets smoothed out, no. And what we're looking at on the, this particular, the high of this week, that was yesterday, was 24.76 in leg C. So, so far, I still have to call it a great peak C, or leg C, because we haven't taken out the high that was made back in March of 2021. And uh, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So, isn't that interesting? Because the five-year, the, the cyan one, has spiraled to the upside with the 10-year. So, there's a little, almost an overlap in the bar, but not the price, of course. So the, the um, five year is 20.38, that's 2.038, and the 10 year is 2.091. Huh, look how close they are. Why bother getting a, a, a 10 year where you can get the five year for the same thing? You don't obligate yourself. So, but look at the 24.38, 2.438 in the 30 year. So th whatever we're looking at right now in the yields, Periodically, we've been here before, we were a little bit like that, but right there, up at that top, it was made back in uh, the week of the, there's a weekly chart, week of 2nd November of 2018, when it hit 34.55. I wonder if those prices are still active, because it doesn't get smoothed out as well. 33, 32, 34, 47. Uh, this is 34.55. But let's keep it as close enough. So look at that. And then it's made a peak D and a pullback sharply. Are we in that situation right now that yields the Fed does something and for some, remember, <coughs> when the yield locks in the rate, that's your call. When it just does that because it's, it's trading, maybe that's your call, but it really isn't. It's not fixed because this could drop sharply. So that's not your base price. So whatever the Fed fixes at, that's going to be it. So I suspect maybe a quarter point and then just wave your your stick and say, but we are quite ready to go even 50, 50 basis points. Uh, and the next move, it could even be earlier than the next move. Just kind of have that threat. I think the market would be a little bit relieved that at least something's off the table over there. But they'll also get worried to say, uh oh, is the Fed now worried about a recession? There's always something to worry about. You want to be when, it, when it's once removed just from your regular daily worry, that's a problem. But look how beautifully wood the iShares of the Global Timber and Forestry ETF is holding. If I was to look at this chart, I'd say, you know, with all the talk and everything, globally, economically, we're actually doing not too badly. And even, even the Philadelphia Housing Index, HGX, Yes, it's gone underneath the rectangle. It's usually not a good sign, but it's only barely under the rectangle. It's had these beautiful arch and cups and arch and cups, and the last one was an arch. Um, and it's trading at 423.93, up 5.29 today, but it's underneath the key, the base of uh, 439.50. It's called a 439. Um, yeah, I think that when you look at everything, we're actually doing a lot better. I want to get out of this now because I don't know it might, it might uh, create a little problem with my charts of closed space. There we are. Yes to all. Goodbye. But what I am saying is that think of this. We've made a high in the S&P back on the 4th of January. And in all this time with an international war going on, Look at this. 
the price has gone from 48.18 down to 41.14. Yes, you have 700 points. That's a that, that's a really big move. But look what we've come from. So even just looking at this peak, and I'm calling still calling it a peak B in the, in the monthly chart, just on a a digestive basis. I don't see why, any reason why it, it shouldn't go down to 4,000. It doesn't have to. I'm just saying, under this, if this is a more serious digestive phase than we've had in a long time, this is different to that a sell off the, when, the, when, the, uh, when the Fed was talking about raising rates back in going to the, uh, that was actually here. That was back in 2018, December, going to that, uh, that the low of, Okay, that was in September, going to the low of December. That was a, a Boxing Day low, 26th of December. Um, and that was quickly repaired. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So looking at the E-mini, what we've got here is see this cup formation held this beautiful 200-period exponential moving average, ran, retested the left side high. The technicals were not that good, so it pulls back to just over the... This is the one-minute chart, the 200 period moving average, and then it's gone to peak A, peak B, C, D, and E, and we should get some kind of a pullback again at this E. We'll see what happens. So, uh, couple of just a couple of quick questions uh, was: um, Is this SCO a viable instrument right now? Well, I mentioned to subscribers about I think three, four days ago. I said I just don't have the courage. I know that we would have a stop. But it, you know, it works overnight and all that sort of thing to go into the SCO, which is three times uh, two. 
off the top of my head, I think it's two times. Two times short, the crude oil, um, it was trading in the 580 area. Um, now it's at 712, it's up a nine, almost 10% today. If you look at crude oil, look how it's pulling back. The only reason is when you're dealing with something that could anything could happen overnight, uh, it just makes it for some, if you're doing it personally and you're just decided to do it, you're watching, you're doing everything. But as a, as a uh, commentary or a suggestion for subscribers in this environment with the speed that's and the speed and the uh, amount of, of points that on the percentage changes, it's just really tough. So I had mentioned that this is where I would like to go, but I, I just didn't have the courage for it. Um, and we have pulled back and even today, crude oil is down uh, almost $9. So yes, it's viable, but now you've got a risk. I don't know what the risk tolerance is. A couple of you asked me about it. Um, absolutely, yesterday was the perfect time to do it. Today, is, it's much more difficult. Not only that, you've got, uh, you've got the market, which is now up 333, 338 in the Dow. S&P is up 53, maybe anticipating something that's gonna happen tomorrow um, with the Fed. So a lot of things are going on. So yes, it is viable. That's what the question was, but uh, and, in terms of risk tolerance, I think that the best has been done just for now, and now the risk is much greater. Next question was A, B, A, B, N, B. Um, and, and I just wanted to co confirm, um, when I'm talking about the, the actual, in the crude oil, when I'm talking about not as, how, expecting some kind of help from the countries that produce the oil, um, this is this is what you look back and you say, what have we done for those countries? Where do we stand? What, are, what, what exactly is going on? And then there's tremendous disappointment if there isn't some help. And that's really the issue. And the issue is that um, this, is, this is kind of where you find out who your friends are. And it's going to be, I think that the repercussions should be quite serious. And in fact, just on, from my perspective, it says have even more determination to develop some kind of independence um, in this whole area of um, just oil generation, and because we need to do it, even if it's short term. That's all I'm saying. Um, so the other thing, uh, yeah, we go. So what we're looking at is, that was that, that question. Another question is, okay, XLE. I'll, I'll do the XLE here because we're looking at, oops, I don't do that. Axel is not what we wanted. We wanted an A minus, an Airbnb. So the question was, is, is, is A, B, and B a viable instrument at this particular time based on everything that you're looking at? All right, well, Airbnb, apartment rental service, you know, it's just, um, it should be doing very well because a lot of people are saying, oh, we're back, we want to be, we want to be going out, we want to, but look, the price is saying it is struggling. Maybe there's something else that's going on with Airbnb, but if I'm doing it just on a, on a chart basis, this is not good action at all. This is the kind of action that we look, you'd be looking at and saying, uh-oh, um, summer and spring and summer are coming, and Airbnb is lagging. It's up today at 4.60 at 143. But wow, it's in a trading range between 155 and 130, um, and it's kind of stuck. So oh, this is really tough for me. Uh, the only question is, do I buy or do I sell? Or do I, do I step aside? And I'm going to say, just at this moment, I would probably make the compromise and I'd say it's held the left side low. It's making a little mini arch formation. It's having a green candle. You have two choices to start a very small position. And I think that was the question, should I start a position? And I'm going to suggest right here, you can either start at 143.20. I personally would not have more than a 3 to 2% stop, a 3-point stop. Why? Because if it goes back, it's a 143. If it starts to trade in the 139s in this environment, and in three or four days, it's not able to really spiral uh, above into even filling the gap from a couple of days ago, maybe it goes to 145.80. It could do that today. It hasn't done it yet. 
um, then, then you're looking at something that's just stuck. It doesn't have to break down, but it's stuck, especially if you're looking at the huge arch formation in the weekly chart and the smaller one in the daily. It's a sharper one in the daily only because it's a, it's a shorter term, but it's shorter in duration going from late January into where we are now. So I'm going to say 143.48, start your position. And it's only a, a really a small starter position. I would probably, if tomorrow at four at three three thirty in the afternoon, <clears throat> even going to Thursday, if it's trading above one forty six, I would add another small position. That's the way I would trade it. I'd keep it as a trade. I don't see this yet as a uh, a buy and hold, but I do think that it, it is trying to form a base to say I'm in play. Now, the big thing about it is it has so many resistance levels. 162 is the 200-period moving average, and it's at 140. That's 22 points higher. They said 143, 20 points higher. I don't know. All I can say is that it's a very disappointing chart formation right now, and I would just be really careful. So nibble here, you could even step aside and say, I'd rather buy strength than weakness. But what it does is it shows strength and then it reverses within three days. It's done that so many or four days. It's done that so many times. So all I'm saying is that I would nibble here at 143.57. <clears throat> I'd probably want to add if tomorrow at four at three o'clock after the Fed speak is actually rallying, I'd add some. And I'd say this original position here could still have maybe a two point or three point stop and just let it go where it's going to go. That's the only way you can do it right now because there's not a single sign that I can see. <clears throat> um, even I'm looking at the on-balance volume. Uh, I, I just see nothing to say that the strength and it's showing right in this moment has the power to go to the 157 area to start a new leg B to the upside. If it does that, that's a really good sign. And maybe you have to give up about 10 points to do that. But I'm saying, yep, at 143.57 uh, or 70, uh, that was when we started this. I'd say you could start your position. Yeah. Um, next thing I had was, whoops, where did it go? Oh, uh, Baidu. Baidu is a good green candle today after a long-legged doji candle yesterday. But it has gone ABC failure. It has gone... Um, from over 350 to yesterday's low of 102, was it? Yeah, 102.18. This is very ugly. That comes into the category of um, oh, EWH, you want to look at it, GTS. That comes in the category of the FXI, which is for the first time trying to have a big green candle. Wouldn't that be something? I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all prices levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. And I have to apologize to John. I did not see uh, that there was a call waiting. And, of course, he couldn't wait because I just kept yakking away. But let's look at the NDX 100. So I'm not doing the QQQ right now. I'm doing the NDX 100. It made a high of 16,764 back on the 22nd of November. Let me see if that ever changed. Uh, 16, that, that's 764. Very nice. And then it made the dreaded, one dreaded H pattern, then a much larger one. Went to a lower low, then a much larger one. It went to a lower low, broke the 200 period moving average support, then treated it as resistance, made a second arch, and no, second is about the fourth arch. Then it's made a fifth arch and went to a lower low. And now what we're looking at is that the low that was made at uh, 13,000, I think it was in 20, uh, 13,020 just yesterday. I forgot to type that in. That was 13,000. And 20.40, yep, 13,020 is trading up uh, 250 points at 13,296. Now, under all circumstances that I would be doing my, my short-term to intermediate-term work, I would at this particular stage say, this is a market that is just, look at the unbalanced volume. It's gone all the way to a low. It's made a little V-shaped recovery from yesterday. Stochastic's making a higher low. The MACD is trying its best to see the nine period differential cross above the 14 therefore the histogram is starting to improve just a little bit the nine is still way under the 14 but this is exactly the moment in the dreaded h pattern that says there was a lower low yesterday and yet another move within a day above the left side low the day is young i'm talking about an hour and a quarter into the into the session i can't talk about it as if it's four o'clock but i am saying that under every other condition and I can't, I can't talk about um, the political aspect or the, 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 the war going on. I, I have to just talk about the chart. This is exactly where there should be a rally. But the, the, the point to be made is it, does, will, it will not succeed because it's making lower arches and lower lows. And it will not succeed unless... For about two or three days after it does it, if it's able to do it, it closes above the high of three days. That's Friday, I believe it was. Friday's high was 13,714 on the NDX 100. If there is a close above it going into Friday afternoon, certainly by Monday, and it's able to hold the uh, the, four, the 14 period moving average of 13,640. I don't want to go down to the 13,486. So that's a huge ask. But this is exactly what I'd be looking at for some kind of a rally that has time to the upside. Time to the upside is not three or four sessions. It's really maybe two weeks. And I don't know in these conditions, can we go two weeks without bad news enveloping the market I don't know but that's what it would need and on the downside because on the downside we've got a peak G top in the Chapman Wake methodology in the weekly chart little double top there and it's come down to a leg E and you can see that for the first time you start you start to notice that the decline is smaller than it had been before as both in the daily and in the weekly that's b below the left side low this is exactly the moment the, the MACD in the weekly chart has 
oodles of time to go before the histogram can even get to a, a zero line. It is way down to minus 291. The stochastic is flat. Remember, when, I, when it's over 80% and holding, I say that's all the books are wrong. They say on, on balance volume, sorry, they say the stochastic over 80% is overbought and under 20% is oversold. I say no, there's exact wrong words. Over 80% is excellent, and especially over 90% and holding and flattening. Well, we're flattening now at 17%, so it's the exact opposite. So until the stochastic can really start to trade on a weekly basis above, I'd say 22, but I really can't. I have to say 25%. Um, it's, it's kind of stuck. So all I'm saying is that for this to be the kind of bounce that is worth putting on a position, and widening a stop and then narrowing a stop as it rallies. Today it's up 265, up 2%. If tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Time, at 3 o'clock, the NDX, I don't know where it'll close today, I don't know where it'll be at that time, but if there's a rally and it is getting close to the 13,350, 13,400 level, that's going into tomorrow's close or higher, That'll say, whew, this is about time we've got a pretty decent rally. And especially if crude oil can be continuing its downside move and and the, the geopolitical um, yellow light that flashes, which is called gold, um, gold has to also be pulling back because that is in play as a uh, almost like a VIX index in the fear factor of gold geopolitically. So... The VIX is the market fear factor. Gold is the geopolitical fear factor. The dollar trading, I didn't even do that today. Our dollar, we are long from 90.07, trading at 98.75. If the dollar continues to hold here, it says, you know what, with all the bad talk and everything, this is still the most respected currency in the world, and it's, it's a stabilizing factor. And that's important. So, John, let's just go. I want you just for the moment go to the QQQ. I've got a little bit more notation there. Um, you can see these arch formations. You can see that in the QQQ, it's obviously the same as the NDX 100. But a lot of people <clears throat> are not looking at the NDX 100. Uh, 100. They've got the QQQs. If you look at the weekly chart, sell mode is deeply in place. If you look at the, the monthly chart with two weeks over two weeks to go, you're looking at the candle uh, of last month, which I would called a kind of a Chapman Wave Roman candle, not 100 percent, but very close because the wick is just a little bit too big. But it's already deeply into it. It's already tested and broken the left side low. So that's suggesting there's a chance that on March the uh, 31st, Thursday, March the 31st, we have no choice but to say, you know what? If there is not a really strong rally going towards the 348 to 353 area by the last uh, days of March, I have to think that there's a sell signal coming up in the uh, monthly chart. So I think I've done that about as thoroughly as I could. Question I have here about uh, CLF, I think it was. Let me just go back here. Yeah, Sharky wants to know about CLF. CLF is, here we go, where did I type it? Uh, ty oh, typed it into the den by mistake. Sorry. CLF. Oh, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't do the downside for the QQQs. I'll get there in a moment. CLF, I had said, just let it pull back. It's a 24.52, making the arch formation, that dreaded H. Let's see if it can pull back under 24. My, my thinking here is if you haven't got any CLF, this is Cleveland Cliffs. It is flat roll steel and iron ore pellets. I think the steels are just having a bit of a breather. They've been spectacular rallying the last uh, two weeks. It just needs a bit of a pullback. I'd look at it again. If, if you've had it and you've taken money off and now you say, where do I put back? Ideally at about 23.50 to 22.80. Um, but at the moment, I'm just saying if the question is, where would I get in right now on the CLF, Cleveland Cliffs? If you haven't had any, Maybe just nibble here at 2449, like a feeler, but this is really such a small position that even if it drops three points, it's not going to hurt you. But this is kind of where you want to get a feel for it. I think it could drop another point or so, and that's really where I would prefer to be looking at. I'll be back in a month. As a chapter, oh, and CRW, the question.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I, I forgot to talk about the downside of the QQQ. <clears throat> if there is a close between this week and next week, it's at 320, uh, 324 right now. If there is, for whatever reason, the close below 310, that monthly chart is going to say, oh, oh, that is a very serious problem. Now, I need to just talk about this for a moment. We've had the tech sector take an unbelievable hit in many, many uh, stocks. That's the cues, but actually, it's mostly, we can go, I just, I grab this always as a, just a good example, DocuSign having a bit of a green session today, but it goes from 314 down to today's low of, let's call it, it go to the 72 level. So many of these stocks are extremely oversold under any condition. But the big question for me is, are we about to see the Microsofts that held beautifully <clears throat> and basically have just started rolling over? Are we starting to see stocks that um, basically held up very well in the big cap, more the, the Dow type big stocks, and Microsoft is part of that. Uh, you'd include uh, in this particular instance, um, you could even go to a Walmart, because I want to do something in the retail area, holding towards the highs in the rectangle pattern. The big question for me is, are we about to see the rollover now in the stocks that have held extremely well as the small as the as the big caps that have now become small caps like a DocuSign, uh, like uh, many of the others, are they going to start to find some stabilization as the 
as the, the, the ones that have held best start to tank. And that says, are we now only in the second part, or even maybe call it the third part of this bear market, and now we're going to see something else? And that, to me, is a really big question. And tomorrow I'll be doing my show at 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. It'll be repeated again at 10, but I have to do an early show tomorrow. And I'll talk a lot more about that because I think that is an issue that we need to discuss. Are we looking at a rollover sector by sector by sector, or are we actually looking at the strength of the ones that are holding up now, actually buoy the market in the next next week? Have a wonderful session, 